Hi, and welcome to this Garden Gnome Software screencast. This screencast is going to look at Pano 2 VR version 5 and the skin variables. Now, there's three types of variable. We have our Boolean, true, false um, values. We also have our text and numbered um, variables. Now, um, what a variable is, is somewhere that we can, it will basically, it's a placeholder that we can store information to. And then using an action set variable value action, we can change this. Now, working in conjunction with um, a logic block, these become very, very powerful. Um, we can do things like change uh, skin colors or change uh, text boxes or do lots and lots of little things with these. But in this particular example, what I want to do is look at numbered variables and we're going to build a slideshow. Now, of course, we can do this with um, text variables, but the numbered variables lend themselves to this particular task very well because we can then number the slides. OK, so this is what we're going to set out to do. Here is a, a slideshow. I've got these manual buttons that I can scroll through backwards and forwards. And then we've got a play button to automatically scroll through the images. And I've got a pause button and then a stop um, button that takes us back to the start. OK, so that's what we're going to achieve. So let's open up Pano 2 VR and the skin editor. And you'll see that what I've already started doing is I've got a um, rectangle with five images and the buttons. Nothing's got any values in or actions, so we're going to actually walk through how to do this. So the first thing we need to do then is click on the blank area for the canvas and set our variable. So I'm going to double click and add my variable name, which I'm going to call slideshow. Um, it's already defaulted to numbers, which is what I want. And I'm going to start my initial value at zero. Now to make this easier to follow, I've numbered the images zero to four. So it's my five images. And these are going to correspond with these values. OK, so that said, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to select the image. And how I'm going to change these or make these visible, I'm going to use the alpha because I want them to fade in and out. So I'm going to set the initial alpha value to zero. Then I'm going to open up the logic block. And then we're going to set the trigger to slideshow. And when the slideshow equals to zero, I want to set the alpha of this particular image to one. And I'm going to use the transition time of one second so it fades in. And just to do that again for the second image, we're going to set the value to zero. Go to the logic block, use the trigger to slideshow, which is our variable. So when the variable now equals one, we're going to set the alpha to one on this particular image. And again, we're going to use the transition time of one second. Now, I've already set the um, other images up, um, so that's all ready to go. So what we need to do now is have a button to scroll through them. So let's have a look at our forward scroll button. And what we need to do now is give it a action of mouse click, set variable value, and the value we're looking for is to add one to the slideshow variable. Now don't forget the slideshow variable starts at zero. So when we click this button, we're gonna add one to it. So every time we're gonna click it, so it'll be zero, click one, click again, it will go to image two, click again, go to image three, and so on. So that's what we need to do. Now the problem there is we keep on clicking, it will just keep on counting up. So we need a method of looping back. So how we do that is we go mouse click, set variable value, and this time around we have a calculation called module. And what a module is, it's like a ring calculation. So what we're going to do is set the value here to five. And the idea is when it gets to four, when it hits five, it's going to throw it straight back to zero. So that's our, our loop as it were set in there. Okay, so that's our forward scroll. And if we just have a quick preview of this, we can now see this working. OK, so that's back to zero and one, two, three, four. OK, so that's working exactly how I want it to. Right, so the back button. Now, this is a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, do the same action, mouse click. We're going to set variable value. But this time round, we are going to use plus four for the slideshow. Now, why plus four? Right, OK, if I'm at image zero, and I click this button, it's going to plus four it. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four. So it's going to go straight to image four. So I'm going to go backwards from zero to four. If I'm at image four and I click this button again, it's going to add four to it. But because of the module, it's going to throw it back to zero straight away. So that's one, two, three, four. So we're now going to be at image three. 
And again, if I click the button, again, one, two, three, four will be at image two, and so on. So you can see that actually, we'll actually because we're adding plus four, but because of the module, it's always taken us back one image. Okay, so that said, what I also need to do then is add the module to it. So mouse click, set variable value, um, set module, and set five. Okay, so if we now take a look at the preview, we can see that I can go from image zero, one, two, and then we can go back from two, one, zero, and click it again. It takes us back to four, three, two, one, zero. There you go, so that's all working backwards and forwards. Okay, so that's our scrolling backwards and forwards buttons, but what about the automation bit? Well, I'm gonna add a timer, and I'm just gonna get rid of the um, logic block for the timer, for the visible, because I don't need that. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set the timeout to zero, because I don't want it to do anything straight away. And I want the type to be on initial, and I want to repeat toggle because I want every time it times out, I want something to happen. Okay, so the actions for this are going to be very similar to the um, uh, forward button. So if we just go to the forward button, I can copy and paste these actions, go to the timer and just paste them in. The only thing I need to do is with the timer, rather than a click, it's going to be an activate because when the timer activates, this is going to happen. So that's those actions done and that's it that's all i needed to do so the timer now will scroll through the images but what we need to do now obviously is have a button to start the timer so this is our start or our play button so now what we need is just a mouse click i'm going to set the value to the timer to be one now the timer has got a toggle action so if I set the value to one, it's actually going to change the image every two seconds because it's going to be act. So we could, we're actually going to get an output and then one second later, because it's a toggle, not and one second later, an output. So that's why we set the value at one. We're going to get it changed every two seconds and I'm setting the value to the timer. So T1. OK, so if I now just preview this and click the go button, you can see that every two seconds now we're going to scroll through the images right that's good now what I need to do though is now have a pause button so if we click the pause button this is pretty straightforward now all we need to do is mouse click and go to set value and set the value back to the timer to zero so the target obviously is time one or timer one so that's now stopping the timer we're actually setting the value to zero so whatever image it stops at the timer is just going to stop there. So that's our pause. OK, now for the stop and rewind button, what I need to do is stop the timer. So mouse click. Set value zero for the timer. And then what I want to do is set the image back to the first image. So that's mouse click, set variable value. So it equals zero for the slideshow. And that's it. If we just click close, save and publish this out. I can scroll backwards and forwards. I can press the play button. As you can see, it'll go automatically every two seconds. I can pause the image. And when I click the stop, it will stop the timer and rewind it. There you go. That's how to use the numbered variables. And thanks for watching.